thanks Linda, Linda and Fabrice for the introduction. Thanks Mohamed also for uh, the, the words on Ancre and uh, you know, its participation, its connection of the workshop. So right now, what I'm about to tell you is to give you some insights on Synergy, this uh, program, its long-term strategy, and well, what might be will be of interest on the short term, the opportunities for engagement and doing joint work together through proposal with opportunities. So I will introduce that and our colleagues afterwards, uh, Hélène Ulmer and Annabelle Rondeau, will tell you more about the opportunities. But just first, a brief reminder. So Synergy, what is it all about? Well, it's summarized in the three lines at the top of this um, slide and in a schematic way below. So it's really in to enable a circular economy approach by face, uh, doing fossil free fuel based chemicals for industry and agriculture. We think, of course, of fertilizers and developing negative CO2 emission technologies using resources abundant in Europe. Renewable energy with a strong focus on solar energy and molecules either as waste from process or manufacturing industries and or available in the environment. So, and um, well, the idea is there. There are two aspects. We want to phase out from fossil fuels, uh, fossil resources to get uh, fuels and base chemicals, which so thus not having a negative impact on the climate, but also uh, of interest for EU in the using resources that are abundant in Europe, because presently fossil resources cost for the vast majority from outside Europe. So there are those two aspects, okay? And um, of course, we show this, uh, so it's summarized as well uh, below in another way. So you want to have the same type of products providing the same type of person services, but by closing the carbon and nitrogen cycle, you can minimize the, uh, you can shift from a linear approach to a circular one. And it's also, as a reminder, it's also uh, something related to storage conversion of renewable energies under chemical form as fuel, well, fuels and chemicals in a society where we are strongly based on fuels, chemical energy. Okay, so that's the concept, the vision. But uh, to do that, we have two approaches, two main routes. Either we can go via an go through, uh, well, indirectly by doing renewable power conversion to fuel, uh, renewable power heat conversion to fuels and chemicals. That's chemical energy using electrochemical and thermochemical processes. That's one approach. Okay, so their electrochemical processes would lead to heat fuels, for, for example. But also, we would like to get inspiration from nature. Okay, with uh, by mimicking photo natural photosynthesis uh, via, uh, by doing direct conversion of solar energy to fuels and chemicals using photoelectrochemical photo approaches or biological or biohybrid process. With also one point is would be to outsmart nature in the sense that presently the yield of conversion of solar, uh, of solar energy to chemical energy by artificial photosynthesis around 1%. So we really want to go beyond that because there's another risky resource that we have in also to deal with. This is available surface that we need to use for living, uh, agriculture and all those aspects. So this is the aspect we can't rely only on what nature provided us as uh, the yield. Okay, so I summarized the three uh, key reactions and I feel that my time is advancing a bit, so I should speed up. Okay, but you can see that three, with, depending on the type of molecule, you can address either hydrogen, carbonated molecules, or ammonia, uh, ammonia, especially for fertilizers. And the challenges behind, are, well, they are very science-based one regarding metals, doing more efficient engineer biomolecules and bioorganisms for light conversion. 
but also getting benefit of the tools of the numerical transition to avoid uh, going through test and trial uh, test trial and error approach for developing more efficient material but trying to target more efficiently thanks to artificial intelligence machine learning and high performance computing targeting the champion uh, system uh, ideally and also a thing of it's not only about science because if you do technologies that are available only for the lab, you want to deploy them at a large scale, so which goes through strong and efficient uh, collaboration between academic industry and demonstration projects, either, you know, that could be, for example, fossil free airport, or that could be also decentralized production of fertilizers, because there's also these aspects. It's, it's not only about centralized production, but you can also think of something where you can have uh, localized production uh, matching the local needs. OK, so for that, we believe uh, that we need, there is the need for a large open research and innovation initiative with a strong cooperation between the, uh, the academic industrial world, but not only, with policy and society as well, in a large-scale initiative in a pan-European platform. That's why we've been promoting this uh, approach of a large-scale uh, European research and innovation I initiative. Okay, where do we come from and where do we go? We come from two projects that were in uh, the pre-maturation was with two uh, coordination and support action in Horizon 2020 that run mainly in, 19, uh, in 2019 and early 2020. These were Sunrise and Energix that were selected at the same call, which shared the same objective, converting renewable into fossil free fuels and chemicals, but with complementary approaches. So at the end of this project, we decided overall to merge all efforts in a single new, in, in single new initiative, Synergy, that we are dealing with today. Okay, so where do we want to go? I said that we want to go to large European research and innovation initiative. So we have a, a, a suitable framework and instruments would be a public-private open partnership. For calendar reasons, the new first set of uh, partnerships has already been decided, uh, been, been decided to be uh, for 2021. We aim at proposing it to European Commission and member states and the community as well, community in a broad sense, of course, for 2024, of course. We don't want to wait for 2024 for starting to work. So that's why we have worked with the member states, with the community, the member states and the commission to build a ramp up phase where besides the coordination aspects, community building and strengthening the road mapping exercise, we are also implementing the Synergy roadmap uh, by uh, proposing a scheme where there is a portfolio of European projects of different types, either research and innovation actions, innovation actions, or together communicating uh, in between them and with a coordination support action, which in some way is acting as a keeping the whole uh, consistent as part of the global initiative. And that also calls beyond, the, this is the open side of it, but of course it makes no sense to do that only at that level, but one has to do it uh, to work and align with national programs with, uh, of member states, associate, uh, associated country, and also uh, of course connect with national alliances to share on, our, on the strategy to make it as a Consist, consistent on at different levels in Europe. There's also the international cooperation side, and a candidate for that is Mission Innovation, launched during the COP21 in Paris, uh, where there is an innovation channel dealing with converting sunlight into chemical energy, to which we are connected and that we will be, remain connected in the future. That uh, allows us to uh, work together 
with the community and countries outside the European Union. OK, so that's where we go. How are we organized? So, uh, so well, we based on own resources mainly. We organize the structure of an executive board, industry board, a coordination and support office. OK, so the uh, initiative is coordinated by Professor Bert Verkusen from Utrecht University. I'm presently the deputy coordinator. And the industry board is chaired by colleagues from uh, Siemens Energy, Maximin Fleischer. And most important is we are working together for the community and together with the community, which presently uh, hosts uh, more than 300 uh, organizations of different types, academic, in, uh, industry, uh, authority, uh, local uh, government, local authorities. Well, today is an event for, uh, for French stakeholders, so I make a bit of a focus on that. So we presently have 30 stakeholders from academia and industry part of the community. French organizations and companies are also organized industry board and executive board, as I mentioned. And um, I just cite the, uh, cite the opportunity to say, well, Cernergy is strong if it uh, works with the community for the community. So the one way is joining us via letter of support, participating to the, uh, uh, the activities. So uh, please, if you are interested, if your organization is interested, you can send a letter of support. So, OK, but I'll remind that. So added value of synergy for the community. So we establish an organization. We are organizing events, OK? That uh, can uh, be uh, besides a kickoff meeting. There are also online industry webinars. We also work with national communities as today. For outreach, we have Synergy website, newsletter, and social media. So you can uh, register to receive. Uh, you can consult the Synergy website to get latest news. You can register to newsletters. And we have working groups just to advocate and push topics and priorities, advise on, on this uh, towards EC and member states, and also prepare strategic research and innovation agenda. Of course, preparing the next step, uh, the future toward a large scale European research and innovation initiative. OK, so presently, the, we are working on the strategy research and innovation agenda, which will be fed by the roadmaps uh, they prepare, discuss with the communities in the two previous uh, actions, but also rethinking overall of it. And we will reach to the community for uh, exchanging on it, endorsing, uh, well, making it evolve, endorsing it. OK, so that's uh, underway. OK, but now if we look at short term opportunities, we deal with all your Horizon Europe programs. And what we did in Synergy was to advise on some topics which we thought could be of interest to the community and to appear in the work programs. So we strongly, we brought five priorities with a coordinated, via a coordinated action with different members, member and associated states, okay? And we also uh, contributed to other topics because it's those aspects of uh, fossil fuels and chemicals is raising more and more interest. OK, and our actions were mainly uh, focused in Pillar 2 on two uh, clusters. And I won't say much more because our colleagues, Hélène and Annabelle, will uh, right afterwards talk about it. OK, we also advise on uh, in Pillar 3. So there will be many opportunities. OK, and just to say, if we look at the work programs to, uh, for the next two years, I mean, on CCU, which is rather broad, you have got CC, uh, you've got 332 topics for a total budget of 600 million euros. Regarding what we call the topics of the synergy ramp-up phase, we have five topics with a total budget a little bit less than 100 million euros. So, just to say, there is interest presently. So interest means uh, there are topics and there's opportunities. So what we implement, so we, we talked about a ramp up, I talked about a ramp up phase, but the idea is uh, represented there. So you, the yellow disk represent topics that will open uh, as indicated, um, uh, that will open in 2021 and 2022 and different aspects which we think are important. This of course was discussed, that was a long process 
to go, get, reach the final uh, the final topics. And the idea is that they communicate, they share the results together with the CSA as part of the overall initiative and avoiding having separate projects working in, let's say, in, independently. We believe this is key to have this. So the CSA will be the cornerstone of that uh, and will allow to have some kind of forum of discussion for exchanging the other project and thus feed the strategic orientation of Sanagi for future uh, propositions. Okay, and we really aim at doing uh, doing uh, doing this way. Okay, my colleagues will tell more about it. But to conclude and take on messages, Sanagi had and has an impact on opportunities, either short or long term, around fossil free fuels and chemicals. Okay, so no, not topics. There are opportunities for putting proposals, your proposals. We also want to, uh, we will uh, implement a scheme for getting, uh, providing a synergy label on the request, of course, of the consortia with some, uh, so there will be simply a condition of the number of uh, uh, consortium members who have provided a letter of support. We will explain that during the forthcoming event, uh, so brokerage event uh, online on the 29th of April, where beyond having this view of the topics, it's also the opportunity to meet other partner organizations. Okay, and uh, so my message is really stay in touch. Okay, Synergy is not aiming to be a close club, but we really open one and it's as I said, it wants to speak for the community, but it needs the community. So it needs you and you've got various ways. I think you will have the slides to remind if you want to have the, uh, of the, 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 the links to do that. But we're really eager to work with you on all that. And I will end. It's an English speaking workshop, but I will say a few words in French. Merci pour votre attention.